Mexico Islands far away on the Atlantic Ocean. Military power defeated by the Greeks. Land of wealth and happiness, destroyed in a catastrophe and forgotten. The mystery of Atlantis has been driving attention of millions of people for centuries. After 2000 years, thanks to thorough research and new technologies, we've made up huge steps into understanding it. Hi, my name is Wojciech Wawrenty and I will take you to an amazing journey into deep past and together we'll finally find out the truth about Atlantis. The first man to tell the story about Atlantis was the famous classical Greek philosopher Plato, student of Socrates. In his two dialogues, Timaeus and Critias, he described the huge islands far away on the Atlantic Ocean. It was bigger than Libya and Asia together, situated beyond the pillars of Hercules. The inhabitants were descendants of Poseidon. They were ruled by ten kings, whose power stretched out to Egypt and Tyrrhenia in Italy. These people were rich and happy, surrounded by beautiful nature. The land was full of plants, rivers and mountains. Humans lived in harmony with the animals. With time, overfull with wealth, they started losing their divinity and decided to take over by force rules over the Western Europe. Athenians, the most beautiful and great people of the time as Plato describes them, managed to stop the aggression. Atlanteans were defeated. Raphael Poseidon drove big cataclysms over the islands, and in one terrifying day and night, big earthquakes and cataclysms came, and whole islands collapsed underwater. So the first question we have to ask is if something like that could have ever existed? The answer is very simple. No, there is no evidence for a forgotten continent and extraordinary powerful people who wanted to conquer Europe. However, Plato gives us few clues. He states several times that his story is true, but is described in a literary form. So we are talking about the legend. A legend is a kind of story that is based on true events. That means looking for Atlantis is tracing back to the very roots of the story. Over the centuries, many theories arise. Some people say Atlantis was in Greece, Central Mediterranean or even in Africa or America. The source of confusion is Plato's statement that Atlantis was situated beyond or towards the Pillars of Hercules, two rocks situated on the edge of the world by the mythical hero. The problem is that even the ancient people argued of where the Pillars were situated. For Plato, who travelled few times to Sicily, the Pillars were probably located in the Strait of Gibraltar, and that's why some scientists argue the true location of Atlantis was in Spain. But all these speculations lose sense when we notice where, when and how the legend emerged. Plato says that the story of Atlantis was forgotten by the Greeks. He acquired this knowledge from the ancient Egyptians. One amazing archaeological find seems to be a report of the destruction of the mythical Atlantis. Egyptian pharaoh from 18th dynasty, Ahmose who exiled former foreign Haxos dynasty, left an inscription called the Tempest Stella. The gods caused that the sky come in a tempest of rain, with darkness in the condition of the west, and the sky being in storm without sensation, louder than the cries of the masses. Although more research must be done, it seems that Egyptians described here consequences of a catastrophe that staggered Bronze Age Europe and destroyed an island of advanced Minoan civilization. So the best way to continue our research is to travel in time to the world before the destruction of Atlantis. Let's go and visit ancient sites of the Bronze Age Greece. We 
We are at the ancient site of Akrotiri. This beautifully preserved site was set up by wealthy Minoans, the ancient rulers of Bronze Age Crete and surrounding areas. All these, all these buildings were preserved thanks to volcanic ash that covered them and now we can go and sightsee the site as all the tourists do. Let's go and look at some interesting features of the city. There is one very interesting feature in the construction of the buildings. Uh, you can see this wood or that is put uh, inside the walls and as we know Greece is uh, a place where there is high, a really high seismic activity so uh, Minoans would construct there that, uh, so that during an earthquake they just wouldn't collapse. The site of Akrotiri is extraordinary and unique. The features of Minoan civilization are really advanced. Their architecture is impressive and it included water drainage systems which was really complex. However, volcanic ash that saved the buildings destroyed the settlement. Minoan civilization of ancient Terra collapsed and was destroyed just in one day and one night. So we can see the geological history of this island by looking on the rocks. I've got here uh, two volcanic rocks. This is pumice, this is uh, basalt. And if you look all around the island, there are cliffs with uh, volcanic rocks, with geological layers. And later we will go and see the Neakameni Island, the caldera that destroyed the Minoan civilization. So let's go and look for new clues. So in the center of the island, in antiquity, there was a caldera, a volcano called the Prekameni. After the explosion, after the eruption, it collapsed underwater exactly as Plato described the destruction of Atlantis. Right behind me here, you can see the Neakameni Island uh, that emerged from water much later. In order to understand the collapse of a system, we have to know the system itself. In order to do that, we'll visit two important museums. The first one is called the Museum of Prehistoric Thera. In the museum we find a lot of frescoes that are frescoes from the Akrotili settlement. And they depict nature, a very flourishing nature. A lot of animals and uh, plants, uh, even some exotic ones like the papyri. Papyri, uh, you can find papyri in uh, nowadays Greece, but you could find it 4,000 years ago because the climate was completely different. This was really the land of wealth. Akrotiri was the land of wealth exactly like Atlantis. While on Crete 
and on Thera in Akrotiri flourished the Minoan civilization, on the mainland Greece flourished Mycenaean civilization and these were the first Greeks. To get to know them we'll visit now Museum of Mycenae of their main and most famous city. So here at the Museum of Mycenae we find a map with trade routes of Mycenaeans and there are many objects that were found in Mycenae which were delivered, traded from Syria, from Egypt and even from as far as Britain. And we have even a fine tablet from Egypt with Egyptian hieroglyphics of Amenhotep the third pharaoh. So Bronze Age is very special. The whole Mediterranean was interconnected with trade routes and all the cultures influenced each other. This time was very different than we used to think. Before we take a look at the final point of our story, we'll check out one interesting trace. Just next to the shore of the southern part of the Greek Peloponnese Peninsula lies the ancient site of Pavel Petri. Why is it so unique? That's because this is the oldest found town submerged underwater. So this is the cemetery here at Pavlo Petri. It comes from the Neolithic period, so from prehistory. We find here beautiful rock-cut tombs. I will now enter one of them. The entrance is very small. So scientists think that maybe children helped to put the bodies of the deceased people inside. But it fits me good. Okay, let's continue. So this prehistoric cemetery on the shore indicates that the site was occupied from the Neolithic period and later it became a very important harbor town occupied the, by the Mycenaeans, so the first Greeks that we've already mentioned. This one is pretty interesting. We are seeing here a tomb and some collapsed rocks that probably covered it. This is a very nice one. This tomb is probably the biggest one. You have also even steps in here. A beautiful big monumental entrance. Okay, I, I will enter that tomb. It has a few chambers inside, so a few people were buried. There's a kind of surprise. Three entrances. Three entrances here. Breathing experience like Indiana Jones. So the last structure you can see here, and this is the beautiful rock cut channel. The water would flow here, and the people would vapor the water and take the salt, and they would use later for food. area is this area of submerged city there are tombs over there and an island and we'll show you all the best 
so in fact anyone can dive here and there are even tours which allow tourists to uh, dive here and on the uh, ground of the ocean you can see lots of stones and these are all stones uh, that collapsed of collapsed buildings and there are small and even bigger ones like tiles from the ground of uh, houses and this is really amazing there are also uh, two big tombs, two big chamber tombs you can see here the dromos which is the entrance to the uh, tomb you can see the chamber in here and this was the tomb for the ruler of the city you can see also bigger rocks uh, which are rocks from the roof which collapsed and this is uh, really uh, remar remarkable and you can see also the outlines of the buildings the bases of the walls and uh, scientists archaeologists can reconstruct the buildings uh, seeing just those stones and as I've said, uh, there's a lot of ceramics everywhere, mixed with the stones. Of course, you are not allowed to take any uh, of them. But this is quite sad, because uh, ocean flows and it's uh, destroying the site. The nature is destroying the site and uh, many pieces uh, are being simply lost. But could this be Atlantis? This is really uh, amazing sights uh, underwater. We have to keep in mind, however, that Plato lived almost two and a half thousand years ago. So was this Atlantis? So snorkeling here was really extraordinary. Uh, I've got here a piece of ceramics. It's like rubbish here. It's simply everywhere. The site is really amazing. Uh, all these buildings underwater and the tombs. Uh, unfortunately for people who uh, think that here the Pavlo Petri was Atlantis, it was submerged underwater uh, around 2000 years ago. So there are many uh, theories uh, about Atlantis, but when we take a closer look at them, they simply collapse and have no sense. Not only the catastrophe is mentioned by Plato. This is the world that predates the eruption and is ignored by many Atlantis researchers. Plato shortly describes the war between Athens and Atlantis. The huge wave of aggression came to destroy the known world of the time. If we consider the prototype of Atlantis as the Minoa civilization, then we have historical records for such a war. Archaeological evidence suggests that after the Cataclysm of Thera, the first Greeks, Mycenaeans, arrived at Crete to take control over it. This new power in Greece was completely different. To get to know it and what happened later, we'll visit the archaeological site of Mycenae. So we are now the ancient city of the first Greeks. This city is really beautiful and monumental. Let's visit it. You can see the lions here. This is the symbol of power of the ruler, of the king of Mycenaeans, so-called Vanax Andron. These blocks are so big that Greeks called them Cyclopean. They believed that only Cyclops could build something like this. Fortifications of the city are impressive. These high walls were almost impossible to be conquered. There is also a so-called North Gate, which allowed the troops of the king to move faster. Hello? 
we are now in the secret tunnel of Mycenaeans. We are not allowed to be here for the safety reasons because these rocks can go down in just a moment. This staircase leads down a lot of meters behind the ground and leads to Persea Spring, spring of water, so that during the siege people had the water to drink. But this place is really amazing and completely mysterious. So they were defending against attacks, but one attack was very unique and destroyed their empire. In around 1200 BC, groups of unknown origin called Sea Peoples arrived to Europe. Civilizations of Greece collapsed, Anatolian capital of Hattusa was destroyed, and Egypt at war. Long-lasting drought came, and people were starving. Trade routes were cut, and climate changed. So-called Dark Ages started in Greece. Administration centers were destroyed, and thus people forgot how to write. They would tell each other about their past. About the world before destruction. Wealthy people, amazing heroes and beautiful cities buried by the time. In this way, from generation to generation, people would create myths and legends. People never forget. Greeks remember the Trojan War and Egyptians wrote down the history of Thera. Centuries later, Plato wrote down this legend, not only as a philosophical dialogue, but as a peam to honor the mysterious and astonishing time before the collapse. War with Minoans became the war with Atlantis, and a huge volcanic eruption became the destruction of Atlantis. So we've traveled through time and traced back the roots of Atlantis legend. As I said in the beginning, Atlantis never existed, as the description is simply fictional. But now we've discovered the sources which allowed Plato to create his story. What's most important, we've got to know the real Atlanteans and learn so much about their past.